You're listening to Miscast Commentary. Hey everybody, welcome to Miscast Commentary. It's Joe Findlay here. Missing this week is Todd Tebow the Sailor Murray. He is still at sea. I don't know what he does out there. I I assume he's looking for Aquaman, and when he finds him, he's going to be sorely disappointed. But um, yeah, we got lots to talk about this week. It's just me, so it's going to be a fairly short episode, because again, I don't want to be the one guy... If I don't know, anything too long becomes a lecture when it's only one person. If it's a conversation, it starts to get pretty entertaining. But I'm not here to report the news to you or anything like that. But while we're at it, let's talk about a little bit of news. I wanted to quickly talk about the box office this weekend. Justice League got uh, kind of beat up by Coco this uh, weekend, and I don't really feel bad about it. I don't know. I've never been a DC guy. Always been a Marvel guy. Yeah, I don't know, it just did not look good to me. It did not sound good when I started hearing reviews. The only people who I've heard who said they liked the movie, and they didn't even say they liked the movie, they are just like, yeah, it's uh, entertaining, is, were like super DC apologists. So, oh well, too bad. Uh, Pixar rules again, so right now, uh, you know, DC is surrounded by Disney. Pixar on one side, Marvel down beneath it right now. With wonder, of all things sitting in there as well like holy crap nobody saw that coming whatever I I still don't know what it's about it's a book or something like that whatever don't care Um, speaking of all the DC and MCU and all that stuff uh, Carrie my wife my beautiful wife has been off for the last couple of weeks she had uh, surgery done and she'd been looking for something to actually watch so uh, she had never actually seen any of the movies from the MCU so I basically lined them all up for her and she's been watching them Uh, so good news, anybody out there who works for the MCU, I brought somebody else into the fold, and yeah, she's enjoying them, we've got her up to Civil War, she had already seen Spider-Man, so I think really all I need to get her caught up now is Doctor Strange and Thor Ragnarok, so both good entries, so that should be good, and I think I might have a date for Black Panther! Got a lot of cool stuff coming up for you in the next little while, uh, we've got a movie set up for next week, and that's going to have Todd hosting. We recorded it before he left back out for sea. And then after that, we have a couple of openings. So we've got some guests coming up for our uh, December 22nd episode. We will have my daughter, Abby, is coming back. Uh, She did an episode with me last year around Christmas time. So she's coming back, and we're going to be watching something. We'll announce that at a later date. But, uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun, and it's something that she likes an awful lot, and it's got some wide appeal, so, I don't know, hopefully uh, her head isn't too big from the last time, and we can all look forward to that. So, that will be a much more safe-for-work edition, obviously. Um, Don't make too many dick jokes around my daughter, as you can imagine, so that should be pretty good. And then our Christmas episode, we always do the Christmas bonus episode, that was going to be Todd and I. And he ended up leaving while I was sick, so we ended up not being able to record it. So I am going to record it with my lovely wife, Carrie. And while I'm not going to say what movie that is either, I can tell you that it is a Christmas movie, or it counts as a Christmas movie if you're going to be all shitty about it. So people argue that it's not a Christmas movie. I say it is a Christmas movie. And last I checked, I have a podcast, so I'm right. It's a great podcast. Listen to it, people. Get your friends. I'm looking longingly out a window right now, hoping you're looking back at me. And then I wonder, why do we live so close to each other? And why are you naked? And why am I not naked? Let's do this. So enough of that, though. We have a great movie coming up next week that we want you to definitely check out. It is the 1st of December that this one's going to be getting released, so we wanted to start out with a little bit of a Christmas feel, not... A Christmas movie, but a movie that has winter in it, and a movie that has the word Christmas in it, and a little bit of Russia-American politics, too, so it's really hitting home right now. Um, What else does it have? It has some beards in it, so that's pretty good. I will tell you, though, I'm talking about winter and December and all this stuff, and it was double-digit now... Okay, we have mostly American listeners. It was 18 degrees Celsius today in my hometown of St. Catharines. So yeah, it was 64 degrees Fahrenheit today in uh, St. Catharines. 
both times I said, uh, St. Catherine's, like, I'm not entirely sure where I live. I'm starting to feel like I might be a, uh, a witness protection guy or something like that. I've, I'm still not used to saying my new name or my new, uh, or my city or anything like that. So trust me, I'm, I've been from here. I've been banned from all the stores. But anyways, yeah, it's been, uh, unseasonably warm. I did go take my daughter to a swimming class in a t-shirt today. The swimming was not outdoors. We're not like that. Although we probably could be. We're pretty amazing people here. Anyway, sorry, we were talking about the movie. And, uh, so yeah, so Russia versus the U.S. Winter, Christmas, beards. What else could it be but Rocky IV? Yes! Rocky, Drago. Amazing shit, baby. I'll put this out right now. I believe I mentioned it in the episode, but I'm just going to put it out there. Rocky has been trying to, like, force-feed us more Drago since then. Uh, in both Rocky... I think they meant wanted to do it in Rocky Five, and it didn't come to pass. Then they wanted to do it in Rocky Balboa, and it didn't come to pass. Then they wanted to do it in Creed, and it didn't come to pass. And now it sounds like they're going to be doing it in Creed too, but uh, giving you kind of a little follow-up to Drago and what happens and... Uh, we'll let you listen next week for that. But in the meantime, let's have a listen to the trailer. Today, the Soviet Union has officially entered a professional... This is not just an exhibition fight. But this is us against them. He would like to compete against anyone who is qualified. Drago is the most perfectly trained athlete ever. Whatever he hits, he destroys. He could have stopped the fight. He could have saved his best friend's life. I'll never forget you, Tom. But now, the one thing he can't do is walk away. Has the fight date been set yet? December 25th. Where? It's in Russia. Are you nuts? Miss Balboa, when will you be going to Russia? I'm not going to Russia. I don't know what you're talking about. He's had one professional fight, and one man is dead. To baby, he's going to have to kill me. Why can't you change your thinking? Because I'm a fighter. You can't win! So let's look forward to that, guys. It's uh, going to be a lot of fun. It's a fun episode. It's my favorite kitschy Rocky movie. I think if I was actually going to rank them, I think I actually like Rocky II the best. Rocky's amazing, obviously. But I like Rocky II the best because I think there's a chase in that one that's a little bit better from both guys, from both Apollo and from Rocky. Uh, whereas the first one was just kind of... It was a standalone story, and this one actually kind of turned it into a franchise, I guess. I don't know, maybe just edges out Rocky a little bit. But Rocky IV is the one I like to watch all the time when it's on, and it's just, I don't know, it's one of those crazy fun ones. Amazing 80s soundtrack. So, if you haven't seen it, go out and see it. You should have seen it already, though. Let's not be stupid. And, uh, yeah, definitely find it. Listen along with us. Lots of cool people. We got a Carl Weathers crossover. We just had uh, Predator last week. So now you get him again this week. You will not get him in the one following that. As far as I know, I don't recall that he's in it. I don't think he is. But yeah, just a little bit more weird news. I was just reading just before recording this. uh, Well, a little while before recording this. I went to start recording it and my neighbor started playing weird like Middle Eastern music. And I thought he was playing it like on like on a stereo or something like that and then it kept like it sounded like he was jamming and I didn't want in case any of it was copyrighted I didn't want any Middle Eastern lawsuits so I uh, just held off for a little while watched some tube 
But yeah, anyway, so I was reading about this thing. Apparently, William Shatner and Jason Isaacs had a weird Twitter, it's, for lack of a better word, Twitter feud. It wasn't like a whole lot of anything. But uh, Jason Isaacs just came out of nowhere, said that uh, William Shatner had blocked him. And then William Shatner tweeted that he had unblocked him. It was a weird thing, and they think it might be related to a... Um, to an article where Jason Isaacs says he didn't want William Shatner in the... to, like, appear in the show as Kirk. And it was because it was a timeline thing, because this takes place ten years before Kirk became the captain of the Enterprise. And so that meant, like, having old William Shatner didn't make any sense. So I don't know what that was. It just was very weird. He seems to have... William Shatner, we're talking, seems to have a lot of really weird feuds uh saw a lot with people from star trek and different iterations but then you see his documentaries and stuff he's done so many star trek documentaries uh the one in particular the captains that i'm talking about right now i do recommend actually seeing it was pretty good it talks a lot about um relationships and things like that that have kind of gone south for all of the captains because of the work that you know the demand that the work has and that kind of stuff uh, it was really interesting in that aspect. But yeah, it's he seems so close there, and then, I don't know, everything goes all wonky on them. But yeah, it just so now all of a sudden he has this weird, awkward thing with the latest captain. So. But he did make a pretty funny uh, Harry Potter comment. You can look it all up on there. I don't want to try and match William Shatner's Twitter timing. Just quickly, I wanted to do, uh, bring up a couple of uh, things I've really been enjoying watching lately. Um been watching Robert Kirkman's Secret History of Comics on AMC. It has been really, really good so far. Uh, I think three episodes have aired at this point. I think that's right. It's on Mondays. And, uh, no, I've seen, no, there's been four. The fourth episode had just aired this past week. Uh, it's been really good. They told the story of uh, the guy who created Wonder Woman and how he had, like, a pretty strange relationship dynamic and had some fetish stuff going on and like a lot of things I didn't know. I didn't know um, Schuster and Siegel who created Superman. I didn't know about their whole financial thing and there's a whole episode about that. Uh, there's an episode on kind of the relationship between Jack Kirby and uh, Stan Lee and that's really interesting. So so yeah, it's been really interesting to like see all these stories and it's not just about comics like it's obviously centered on comics because that's the name of the thing and all that it just shows you how all these comics you know they kind of came front and center with all this kind of crazy stuff going around and its popularity and uh you know how certain things like superman especially how it changed the whole genre of comic book or the medium of comic books i guess comic book isn't a genre until you get to movies uh, most recent episode was about how the events of September 11th affected uh, Marvel and DC and what they kind of did after that and how their storylines changed and all that kind of things that led up to things like Civil War and all this kind of cool stuff. A uh, really cool episode, and it wasn't, I really thought, because I heard about it ahead of time, that it was going to be like a real one of those, you know, we it's America. This happened, and then America, you know, like that kind of thing. I don't know, uh, but it's uh, it was a lot cooler than that. It showed how they how they honored the people who were there, you know, like all the first responders and that kind of thing, and it showed uh, how they changed again, how they essentially changed a lot of their characters and brought you know the kind of political and military and all these different issues to light in a completely different way. So I totally recommend checking out uh, Robert Kirkman's Secret History of Comics. So yeah, so check it out. And the other thing, I mean, I've mentioned this show before in the past. Uh, it's not Community. Uh, but uh, anybody who's not watching it should really check it out. It's a very out there kind of thing. It might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it sure as hell is mine, and it has been for a long time. Uh, I've been watching The Chris Gethard Show, which is currently on True TV in the U.S. and Action in Canada, and it was on uh, Fusion for two seasons before that, and it was actually on Public Access for several years before that. And it is a fantastic show. It's a very out there 
you know, version of a talk show that's hosted and cast by a bunch of UCB actors. Uh, lots of improv and stuff like that. They're bringing on great guests. They had Seth Meyers on recently, uh, Hannibal Burris, uh, Jason Mantzoukas, Paul Shear, all these different people. Uh, actually, speaking of those two guys who are actually going to be hosting their last episode of the year, they hosted the, or they didn't host, sorry, they guested on the second last episode of the previous season on Fusion, which uh, that's definitely like a good starting off point if anybody wants to see it. It's one of the funniest hours in television. So it's Jason Mantzoukas and Paul Shear guesting on the show with Chris Gethard and it's just literally it's called one man's trash you can find the whole episode on YouTube uh everything from both fusion seasons and all of the uh public access stuff is all available on YouTube in full so you can definitely check those out but this one episode yeah it's called one man's trash and it's literally everybody just trying to guess what's in a dumpster and it is it sounds like ugh, right but it is so funny when you hear the premises of some of the shows, you're just like, what the hell are they going to do with that? And then they just knock it out of the park. They had an episode in the first season on Fusion where it was just for dogs. So the entire audience was made up of dogs and everything was built towards dogs. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Jason Sudeikis was the guest on that one. Uh, I'm just trying to think of some others. They did uh, 18th century American gladiators on the public access version uh, they do something every now and again called the uh, crowdsource character contest, which is always hilarious. Uh, people just give the name of a character, they email in the name, and then they hire an improviser, and they work out what the character's going to be, and they create those characters, and some of them have just been out of this world. Uh, there's three of those episodes from the public access days. It's so wildly creative. They're not afraid to fail. Their pocket is kind of, if this is a disaster, we'll make something cool out of it type thing. But it's a really, really funny show, and I do recommend that everybody at least check it out. And like I said, go check out that uh, One Man's Trash. It's a really good kind of overall idea of what their show is like, not just in the current, hey, we're on cable days, but in the public access days too. They just didn't have money then, but it was the same energy and passion and the ideas and all that good stuff and anybody who does like the chris gethard show uh the uh most recent episode of how did this get made well as of this recording so but yeah anyways the most recent episode of how did this get made uh was guested by chris gethard so you hear them talk about it a little bit as well uh they do the movie the jazz singer it's a really funny episode. I feel really weird plucking a podcast that is a billion times more popular than this one on the show. But hey, this is what we do, and I this is the kind of stuff I listen to when I'm not, when I'm not doing this. So yeah, go out and enjoy it. Yeah, there's a lot of connections to those things in my life. I find I see them everywhere, or some connection like June Diane Raphael, who's one of the hosts of How Did This Get Made, was just on Curb Your Enthusiasm, and I was watching that, and it's just. It keeps going and going and going. Um, and speaking of Manzukis and Sheer, and how did this get made, the movie The Disaster Artist is coming out this weekend, and I am very excited about it. Uh, anybody who doesn't know about this movie, it's, a, it's about the, uh, the making of the movie The Room, which is, you know, one of the best bad movies of all time. Uh, how did this get made? I won't say made it famous, because it was already quite a, you know, quite a cult thing beforehand. But they did an episode on that, and they had one of the cast members who actually wrote a book about the entire experience making the movie, and which got optioned by James Franco, who now plays Tommy Wiseau, who is the uh, director, writer, producer, star of The Room. And so yeah, so this movie's coming out. It looks really funny. It looks really crazy. Um, Jason Mantzoukas and Paul Shear are actually in it as are a lot of people. But uh, yeah, I think that that show got a lot of appreciation for uh, the extra attention it gave to uh, to the movie or the or, or at least to the book. But it's a lot... I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be uh, something worth checking out. It got rave reviews during its uh, tours around the, around the film festivals and whatnot. I think it was Sundance where it started. 
but it was at the Toronto International Film Festival and all that, and it's uh, been really well received. I have one friend who saw it at, at the uh, Toronto Festival and said it was amazing, so I'm really looking forward to checking it out. I don't have much else for you guys. Gonna be honest, this is longer than I expected it was gonna be. It's uh, time to go, I think. Uh, make sure to tune in next week. Check out Rocky Four. Really funny one. Uh, as always, we do encourage you to try and find the movie. Uh, usually, you can find them on Netflix or on one of the friggin' streaming things has them. You know what I mean? There's there's a million ways to find these movies. We're not going to tell you how to do it. But yeah, definitely check it out. And uh, if you're going to check it out, get a friend to check it out. You know? Tell them. Say, hey, do you like Rocky Four? Yeah. Do you like assholes who talk over movies? Yeah. All right, great. So do this thing where you listen to the two of them together or just listen to them talk about Rocky IV and you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember that part. What they're talking about that part right now. Yeah. Keep spreading the word. Tell people we exist. Uh, as always, reach out to us at uh, podcast at miscastcommentary.com or on Twitter at miscastpodcast, at Instagram at miscastcommentary. All the fun ways. Uh, find us at miscastcommentary.com for all news and media and social media links and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, all the places to find us. And wherever you do listen to us, just make sure to like or comment or uh, rate us or uh, review us. Any of the things you can do because every one of those things really helps us out and uh, we appreciate it whenever it does come up. Uh, we have been growing slowly but surely and I've been kind of looking into that, and it's been uh, doing quite, and everything's been going quite well, so we really appreciate it, and much love to California. If we're going to create a, a uh, competition for this thing right now, I would say more than 50% of our viewers are from California, which makes me feel like I'm going to become a movie star. Now, I mean, the thing in my brain that tells me the truth says, no, you're not going to be a movie star, you're going to be poor forever, and it's going to be fine. And tell you you get hit by that meteor because you didn't have meteor protection that you could have bought if you you know were richer, but it's fine. It's fine. It's not a big deal. It's I died with my family under that meteor. It was quick because as as meteors are, and uh, I'm I feel like I'm pronouncing it weird. Meteor. Is it meaty or is it fishy? The hell was that? Did anybody hear that? Is that a, I'm alone right now. Is that that had to have been a ghost? Todd asked me a few weeks ago on the show if I believed in ghosts, and I said no. And now I'm positive that was a ghost. And so I'm going to go investigate that. I'm so easily interrupted, as you can see. So I'm going to go investigate the ghost. You guys tune in next week. Watch Rocky Four. Listen to us talk about Rocky Four. Listen to or watch the screen. When we talk about Rocky IV, while Rocky IV is not on the screen, that's also a possibility. Um, you can hell, you could just look at a sports ticker while we're while you're listening to this too. I mean, it's really okay. I, th I find us entertaining no matter what, and I hate myself. So I mean, if I find me entertaining and I hate me, then you should all find me entertaining because you don't know me. I'm Canadian, so you know I'm nice, right? And Todd's great too. He's not currently doing anything illegal that I know of. He's working on a boat. Unless he works for the Joker or something. I don't think he... he honestly, I don't know. I've vaguely asked him what he does on the boats. I know kind of what his job is. But, like, I don't ask any further questions. I feel like he's gonna... Godfather close the door on me. Like, never ask me about my business. So I just... I don't do it. And, uh... Yeah, it could be anything. I hope he's not shipping slaves from other countries or like child brides or something like that okay now i need to ask him that i'm gonna text him tonight but uh I, i'm sure it's not last i last i checked he's he's never said anything about you know having to like scrub brains off the deck for that thing in movies where they kill one of them just to as a lesson to the others you know so i feel like i got him investigated now do you think that's true oh i hope it's not true He'll be really mad at me. And as you can hear from this, doing it without him would probably not be the best idea. All right, guys, tune in next week. I gotta go figure out some stuff. Love you guys. Bye bye. This has been Miscast Commentary with your hosts, Joe Finley and Todd Murray. 
executive producer, Joe Finley. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. Visit www.miscastcommentary.com for all news related to the podcast. Miscast Commentary is a Miscast Media Production.